Hi, and welcome to Meditating the Word. I'm so glad you joined us. We're reading the entire Bible this year in chronological order. If you'd like to download a copy of the reading plan, just go to blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. The translation I'm reading from is the World English Bible, but feel free to follow along in your favorite translation. Would you do me a huge favor and subscribe to this podcast? You can subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. That will help others find this podcast. This is Day 42. Today we'll be reading Exodus chapters 36 through 38. The Second Book of Moses, commonly called Exodus, chapter 36. Bezalel and Oholiab shall work with every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all the work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord has commanded. Moses called Bezalel and Oholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to the work to do it. They received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary with which to make it. They kept bringing freewill offerings to him every morning. All the wise men who performed all the work of the sanctuary Each came from his work, which he did. They spoke to Moses, saying, The people have brought much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make anything else for the offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had, was sufficient to do all the work, and too much. All the wise-hearted men among those who did the work made the tabernacle with tin curtains of fine twisted linen, blue, purple, and scarlet. They made them with cherubim, the work of a skillful workman. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the one curtain from the edge in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second coupling. He made fifty loops in the one curtain. He made fifty loops in the edge of the curtain that was in the second coupling. The loops were opposite to one another. He made fifty clasps of gold and coupled the curtains to one another with the clasps, so the tabernacle was a unit. He made curtains of goat's hair for a covering over the tabernacle. He made them eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits and four cubits the width of each curtain. The eleven curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. He made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the coupling, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain which was outermost in the second coupling. He made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together, that it might be a unit. He made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a cover of sea cow hides above. He made the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood, standing up. Ten cubits was the length of a board, and a cubit and a half the width of each board. Each board had two tenons, joined one to another. He made all the boards of the tabernacle this way. He made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, southward. He made forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for its two tenons, and two sockets under another board for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle on the north side 
he made twenty boards, and their forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. For the far part of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. He made two boards for the corners of the tabernacle in the far part. They were double beneath, and in the same way they were all the way to its top, to one ring. He did this to both of them in the two corners. There were eight boards, and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, under every board, two sockets. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle, for the hinder part westward. He made the middle bar to pass through in the middle of the boards, from the one end to the other. He overlaid the boards with gold, and made their rings of gold as places for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen with cherubim. He made it the work of a skillful workman. He made four pillars of acacia for it, and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold. He cast four sockets of silver for them. He made a screen for the door of the tent of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen, the work of an embroiderer, and the five pillars of it with their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and their fillets with gold, and their five sockets were of bronze. Chapter 37 Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood. Its length was two and a half cubits, and its width a cubit and a half and a cubit and a half its height. He overlaid it with pure gold, inside and outside, and made a molding of gold for it around it. He cast four rings of gold for it in its four feet, two rings on its one side, and two rings on its other side. He made poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to bear the ark. He made a mercy seat of pure gold. Its length was two and a half cubits, and a cubit and a half its width. He made two cherubim of gold. He made them of beaten work at the two ends of the mercy seat, one cherub at the one end, and one cherub at the other end. He made the cherubim of one piece, with the mercy seat at its two ends. The cherubim spread out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces toward one another. The faces of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat. He made the table of acacia wood. Its length was two cubits, and its width was a cubit, and its height was a cubit and a half. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. He made a border of a hand's width around it, and made a golden molding on its border around it. He cast four rings of gold for it, and put the rings in the four corners that were on its four feet. The rings were close by the border, the places for the poles to carry the table. He made the poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold, to carry the table. He made the vessels which were on the table its dishes, its spoons, its bowls, and its pitchers, with which to pour out of pure gold. He made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of beaten work, its base, its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its flowers were of one piece with it. There were six branches going out of its sides. Three branches of the lamp stand out of its one side, and three branches of the lamp stand out of its other side, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a bud and a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bud and a flower. So for the six branches going out of the lampstand. In the lampstand were four cups made like almond blossoms, 
its buds and its flowers, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, for the six branches going out of it. Their buds and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole thing was one beaten work of pure gold. He made its seven lamps and its snuffers and its snuff dishes of pure gold. He made it of a talent of pure gold with all its vessels. He made the altar of incense of acacia wood. It was square, its length was a cubit, and its width a cubit. Its height was two cubits. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top, its sides around it, and its horns. He made a gold molding around it. He made two golden rings for it under its molding crown, on its two ribs, on its two sides, for places for poles with which to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices after the art of the perfumer. Chapter 38 He made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood. It was square. Its length was five cubits, its width was five cubits, and its height was three cubits. He made its horns on its four corners. Its horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the vessels of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the fire pans. He made all its vessels of bronze. He made for the altar a grating of a network of bronze under the ledge around it beneath, reaching halfway up. He cast four rings for the four corners of bronze grating to be places for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar with which to carry it. He made it hollow with planks. He made the basin of bronze and its base of bronze out of the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered at the door of the tent of meeting. He made the court For the south side southward, the hangings of the court were of fine twined linen, one hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their sockets twenty, of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. For the north side one hundred cubits, their pillars twenty, and their sockets twenty, of bronze. The hooks and the pillars and their fillets of silver. For the west side were hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten, and their sockets ten, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. For the east side eastward, fifty cubits, the hangings for the one side were fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And so for the other side, on this hand and on that hand, by the gate of the court, were hangings of fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. All the hangings around the court were of fine twined linen. The sockets for the pillars were of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. Their capitals were overlaid with silver. All the pillars of the court had silver bands. The screen for the gate of the court was the work of the embroiderer of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen. Twenty cubits was the length and the height. Along the width was five cubits, like the hangings of the court. Their pillars were four, and their sockets four, of bronze, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their capitals and their fillets of silver. All the pins of the tabernacle, and around the court were of bronze. These are the amounts of materials used for the tabernacle, even the tabernacle of the testimony, as they were counted, according to the commandment of Moses, for the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest.
Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Oholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver, and a skillful workman, and an embroiderer in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work in all the work of the sanctuary, even the gold of the offering, was twenty-nine talents and seven hundred thirty shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The silver of those who were counted of the congregation was one hundred talents and one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca, a head, that is, half a shekel, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, for everyone who passed over to those who were counted, from twenty years old and upward, for six hundred, three thousand, five hundred, fifty men. The one hundred talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, one hundred sockets for the one hundred talents, one talent per socket. From the one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars, overlaid their capitals, and made fillets for them. The bronze of the offering was seventy talents, and two thousand four hundred shekels. With this he made the sockets to the door of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, the bronze grating for it, all the vessels of the altar, the sockets around the court, the sockets of the gate of the court, all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins around the court. Father God, we read how you gave the Israelites favor with the Egyptians, but it isn't until we read about the materials given for the building of the tabernacle that we realize just how much they were given. And what they received from the Egyptians, they freely gave for the building of your tabernacle, so much that Moses had to tell them to stop giving. May we have that same heart, Father, to give until there's an overflow into building your kingdom here on earth and to trust that we can't outgive you, Father. Amen. I'd like to invite you to join our Facebook community and to share your thoughts about today's reading. I put a link in the notes. If you enjoy these episodes, it would mean a lot to me if you would rate and review the podcast. Again, thank you for joining me as we read the Bible in a year. I can't wait to see you tomorrow as we continue our journey. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.